Michigan's no-fault law regarding automobile accidents and truck accidents is more than 30 years old. And still that raises questions about what it does and how it does it. We're going to talk to two attorneys who know all about it right here next on Due Process. Major funding for Due Process is provided by Mead Lexus of Southfield and Mead Lexus of Lakeside, offering a large selection of new and pre-owned certified premium vehicles. Someday, cars will use infrared to monitor the driver's face and alert them when they're not paying attention to the road ahead. The first ever HS Hybrid from Lexus. And by WWJ News Radio 950, keeping you up to date with the latest news, traffic, weather, sports, and business information 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm Henry Baskin, your host for this edition of Due Process. We're going to talk about no fault automobile insurance, and that takes in the uh, entire number of truck accidents and other, other major incidences. But to do that, we've invited two experts down. Tim Lessing, uh, welcome to Due Process. Thank you. Tim, what's the name of your firm? Friedman, Lessing, Katinsky, and Friedman. We go and by the name of the Michigan Legal Team. Michigan Legal Team? Correct. Okay, and you do all, what, personal injury work? We actually specialize in all forms of personal injury. We have a, uh, a focus area of automobile cases, which comprises probably 80% of the personal injury cases we do. Okay, and Steve Gersten, welcome to Due Process. Thank you, Henry. Steve, tell me about your firm. Uh, we are 18 lawyers. Uh, we are the largest firm in Michigan, totally specializing in very serious car and truck accidents. And the, uh, the name of the firm is Michigan Auto Law. Okay, so you decided to put names on these firms. Uh, uh, you know, Michigan Auto Laws, we don't, we don't advertise on TV or yellow pages. Um, most of our cases come from other lawyers, so Michigan Auto Law makes more sense for people than Gersten, Coltino, Gersten, mm -hmm. Christensen, and Wright. When you have 18 lawyers, it could be a really, really big name. Well, let me uh, ask you, if you could, somebody could just tell me, what does no fault mean to the average consumer? Boy, that's a, that's a kind of a complicated question. Uh, back in the 50s, 60s, uh, we really only had one form of law when it related to automobile accidents, and that was general tort law. Uh, the legislature and a bunch of other special interest groups took a look at that, and they decided that for a number of reasons, the law just wasn't working. One of them was that it, uh, the law was skewed towards non-negligent drivers getting benefits, meaning that if you were driving down the road and another, autom autom another automobile hit you, mm -hmm. then you could sue and you could potentially get some benefits. Sure. But if you were at fault, you were kind of out of luck with respect to any kind of medical care, medical treatment, well, anything like that. Wouldn't that be uh, appropriate? Well, not necessarily. Uh, people have automobile insurance. People were, were severely injured. And the biggest issue that came about in the 50s and 60s was it was, it was forcing uh, those people who were negligent but injured, it was pushing all of that medical load onto the government agencies and Medicare and Medicaid, and it was at a substantial cost. So the legislature uh, decided to take a second look at it, and, and they wanted to make sure that when people were involved in automobile accidents, they had a right to get immediate treatment so that they were not withering on the vine okay. while they waited for care. And, and see, that treatment comes from their own policy, right? Right. And, and what I always say is, you know, Michigan law has the most generous law in the country when it comes to people collecting medical bills and wage loss from their own insurance company. And the reason is it's no fault. Right? So irregardless of fault, that's why the name is no fault, people would turn to their own insurance company, even if they're completely innocent. Their own right. insurance company pays their no fault benefits. Contrast that with the third party case, which is now the case against the person who causes the injury, who causes right. the car crash. Who's at fault? Exactly. Okay. Now, now in that respect, Michigan has the worst law in the country when it comes to suing somebody else for causing your injuries and pain and suffering. Okay. So we have, we have an incredibly generous first party system which allows people to receive medical bills for life, wage loss at 85% of what you would normally make, tax free for up to three years, replacement services, which is basically $20 a day, again, for up to three years. And replacement services means what it sounds. It's replacing services that the injured person would have performed if they had not been injured. Mm -hmm. But because they are injured, it has to be replaced by someone else. Okay. And then mileage well, to the, or from any doctor. All right, there's a preamble, though. And it is that everyone has to purchase 
insurance to be able to drive a motor vehicle. Very important. Very important, but it, the key is that it doesn't always apply depending on the situation. For example, if you're a pedestrian walking down the street and you're 17 years old and you don't own an automobile, uh, that, that does not apply to you. If a motorist plows you down, you have the right to turn around and make a claim against, depending on the priorities, against that his person. automobile insurance okay. policy or the assigned claims facility. Well, I guess what I'm saying is everyone who drives a motor vehicle, whether it be a motorcycle or a truck, has to have insurance. Absolutely, or and it's the biggest mistake that people make. It's required when you register your vehicle and get your driver's license right. uh, updated, you have to show proof of insurance. By but not getting it, you yeah. are not availing yourself of the incredibly generous system that's already but, in place. But what happens when they buy a six-month policy and, and then let, let, it it lapse. let it lapse? Which is the game that people do. Yeah. Um, you know, they estimate there are about a million people uh, in Michigan who are driving around without insurance. Without insurance. And there are actually, there was a new study that came out in Detroit that said 50% of the drivers in Detroit are driving without any insurance. Okay, that means then that they're not going to get these benefits that you were just talking about. That's, that's incredibly important. That means, and, and this is, to put it in, in simple terms, if you are sitting at a red light and you are rear-ended by a drunk Coca-Cola truck driver right. and you are paralyzed for life, you have no ability not only to sue that drunk driver who caused your injuries, but you can't even collect your medical or wage loss because you were uninsured. Wait, hold on. It is I, catastrophic. Wait a minute. I can't sue the guy that ran into me? If you're uninsured. Correct. You do not have the no, right what, what to case, sue. What case stands for that proposition? Well, it, it can't be written into legislation. Actually, it was written in the legislation in 1995. Well, that was well, part of the tort reform package. That's sort of draconian that was because... The, the, the guy sitting at the light didn't do anything wrong. Henry, it is the most draconian law in the country. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, the, it, it, the way that the legislature looks at it, which I disagree with also, is that the right you to drive... with what? The, the way that the law is written. Oh, right. The legislature okay. looks at it and says... <laughs> I think says, we all agree on that. <laughs> well, the law says that uh, in Michigan, it is, a, it is not a right to drive. It's a, you, you have, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. Yeah. So they argue that if you're going to be on the road and you're going to be operating a motor vehicle, you must get the requisite no-fault insurance to make sure that everyone is covered in the system. Let me tell you guys something. I've been doing this show for... 20 years, 25 years, or whatever. And no one has ever sat here and said that if you don't have insurance, then you cannot sue the person that just creamed you with a 20-wheeler. Right. And that's and, the law. And that is the law. If you are the so, owner and the operator of the motor vehicle that you are in at the time of the accident, you have no right to sue the driver that causes your injuries. All right. The passenger, though, has a right to sue. A passenger would have a right to sue. It okay. doesn't cover the passenger. So if someone comes to your office and says, um, I just got slammed by, by someone, uh, I was stopped at a red light, the first question you ask is, let me see your insurance policy. Unfortunately, that's always where you start with. But let me add something. This is very important. You know, Michigan has optional uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. And, and this is the oh, two, okay. these are the two most important insurance coverages that nobody knows anything about it's in the like, state. This is not like optional health insurance, right? No. This no. is, oh, okay. it, see, the difference is in, in Michigan, your no-fault insurance benefits are mandatory. People have to buy no-fault insurance. Right. But they don't have to buy, that's why it's optional, uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. And, and the warning I would give any person watching this show is that you absolutely must purchase uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. And think about this. If you're in Detroit and there's a 50% chance that a driver who strikes your vehicle does not have insurance, right. you're out of luck. Absolutely. Unless well, you have uninsured motorist coverage. And it costs well, you have uninsured. No, you don't. You have to add it as a rider to no. your insurance policy. It's and an it costs coverage. next to nothing that, well, I mean, to get it. No, you have to have your own policy. Correct. That's right. right. But in, to get underinsured, you can't sue anyone. No, no. The, the way that the, the UM, it's called UM and UIM coverages for short. The way that they work are if you, for example, have a $100,000, $300,000 policy with a UM and UIM endorsement, mm -hmm. and you're driving down the street, and one of two scenarios happens. You either get hit by a driver who's carrying the minimum no fault, which is 2040, or you get hit by a driver that has no insurance whatsoever. One of your two policies is going to kick in. You're either going to kick in your uninsured motorist benefit, which means that you will now be able to say to your insurance company, look, 
the person that hit me didn't have insurance, didn't have insurance so okay. I want to look to my 100, 300 policy and I want to collect against so that. So you're going to sue your insurance right. company. The yeah. other so flip so side so is if there's... So your insurance company in that case actually steps into the shoes of the oh, wrongdoer uninsured right. driver. So you're, exactly. you're suing right. your own insurance company. Exactly. Correct. And the, if you had underinsured under motorist coverage, let's say it was a $20,000 policy that the other driver had, you would be able to look to first the driver, and if you can exhaust that policy of then twenty thousand, you, you go to yours for the hundred. But okay. they're entitled to an offset, so the most you would whatever get would you, be eighty thousand. Yeah, whatever from you your get. own carrier. But so, they cost next to nothing. So you're recommending that people buy insurance that yes. covers both they, sides. They have to. They in, in Michigan have to. today, you absolutely have to. Okay. And, and and Tim's right. You know the cost is. I think I pay about thirty dollars. I have five hundred thousand dollars worth of uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. So mm -hmm. using Tim's example, because let's face it, most people drive around with minimum policy limits, $20,000 right. policy limits. Well, whatever they can get away from, sure. you know, and they say, okay, but they, I guess they might change the law someday and say, hey, listen, in order to drive on our streets, you have to have X number of dollars in coverage. I mean, I see that well, down did the that. road. But I Henry, they did that in 1973. Right. That's it just, where the it just has never been changed from. since then. <laughs> and it was you know, never, that was a long time ago. And so it was never adjusted to inflation. That. Right. So to put it another way, $20,000 today is about $6,000 worth. For sure. We have, um, we have Cynthia Nunez with us uh, yes. by remote, and uh, she's a guest who can tell us a story about a truck accident. Uh, Cynthia, welcome to Due Process. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to tell you about my brother. I think um, what happened to him and how he lived his life professionally present a terrible irony and really reveal a problem in Michigan with the trucking industry. My brother, Patrick Nunez, was simply on his way to work on June 19, 2007 when he was killed by a truck and the trucking company. He was only 42 years old with a wife and two girls, then aged 9 and 10. Um, even though he was only 42 when he died, he had committed 20 years of his life as a research scientist for the Army. He was on his way to work at the TACOM and Tardec plant in Warren. And he was trained as a mechanical engineer. And as many people know, the Army, the Department of Defense, has had a focus for several years on soldier safety. He and his team had a very sophisticated approach to soldier safety with the use of robotics, with the use of computer simulation, advanced science and mathematics and studies to keep our soldiers safe. And no one can argue with that need to help our soldiers in their job. This sophisticated approach to safety collided with a trucking industry, a trucking company and truck driver that had the opposite approach and perspective. They had complete disregard for safety. Trucking industry in Michigan, and I believe that Steve's law firm has gathered evidence from the federal government to show that there are over a thousand trucking companies in Michigan that have violations of our trucking laws. They don't need to take as a sophisticated approach as my brother and the Army and the Department of Defense take towards social, toward soldier safety. There's basic things we know like a truck driver should drive in the correct lane, should not speed, should be medically able to drive. If his truck or her truck was just loaded with 75 tons or 150,000 pounds of gravel, they should make sure that their truck is in a safe condition to drive, that the mm -hmm. tire pressure is appropriate, that the brakes are working. Well, isn't there an, a, a group that overlooks the truck safety uh, elements. I mean, I see them stopped on the road from time to time. They drive black cars and they're talking to the truckers. Henry, you see 1%. Well, well yeah, they, it's, it's they 1%. don't stop all of them. And I've seen some of the heavy loads and see, I've seen them in different lanes. And when I say, says trucks stay in the right lane, they're all over the road. Correct. 
Anyway, what happened to your brother? Did, was he stopped at a light or? No, he was on the highway. He was on 75 North driving on the Rouge Bridge, mile marker 43. Mm -hmm. uh, the truck was in the left center lane, which was not the correct lane. And uh, the left steering tire blew while this truck, 18-wheeler, was fully loaded with 150,000 pounds of gravel. And my brother was alongside the truck at the time. The truck carried my brother uh, to the median, and mm. he was killed. Uh, was the driver charged? He was not. He was not. Was, was the case sent to court? There was a wrongful death action uh, brought by Mr. Gersten's firm by Michigan Auto Law, and ultimately we did settle out of court mm -hmm. on the case. But um, So you say that truck safety in Michigan is, is largely overlooked? It is. I think that, you know, I used to be an assistant attorney general, and the best argument any attorney for the government can make is that the laws exist and should be enforced for the public health, safety, and welfare. Mm -hmm. And state governments always try and strike a balance between uh, the need and interest of a business to conduct itself and intervention by the government. Well, it, it's well said, but we're living in Michigan, and Michigan still allows people to smoke in public places. Did you know that? Correct. I mean, we're, we're number 50 out of 50 states in a lot of areas including education. So when you talk about truck safety enforcement, you're talking about uh, what I believe to be a vastly overlooked area. When Absolutely. those behemoths are out on the highway going 70 and 80 miles an hour, they can't even stop within any decent assured clear distance ahead. I mean, they just can't stop. With drivers that sometimes have questionable histories and that occasionally uh, aren't up to specs for as far as their medical exams and may have their own yeah, medical well, problems well, that are an issue. Well, the Teamsters require logs to be kept as to how many hours you drive on the open road to things like that. But what you're saying is that you're still committed to the cause in terms of trying to get laws changed, I would hope, uh, to have greater scrutiny of the industry. I would, I would agree with that, Henry. I think that um you hope that businesses can police themselves, and I'm sure there are many trucking companies that do conduct, conduct themselves responsibly with the respect for safety and human life. But when there are so many in Michigan that do not do that, right. there, ha there has to be attention paid to this issue. I think a lot of attention is being paid now to people who text on their cells while driving. That's a good thing to bring awareness to that safety. Well, they watch TV too. Correct, and I, I think there does need to be more attention to the problem with trucking companies in Michigan well, that do not practice safe, pra that don't have safe um, practices within their industry. Hopefully, in your brother's legacy and working with these kinds of attorneys, some change will be made. I That's hope. our hope. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know. When you're driving on the road today, Henry, and you're passing a truck, one out of every four trucks on our road today is in such a defective mechanical condition that it is in an out-of-service condition. Mm -hmm. One out of every four. That means it is so dangerous that if the police found it, they'd have to sticker it, and it couldn't even be driven to be repaired. It would have to be towed. In Cindy's case with her brother, what we found out during our investigation was that neither that truck nor that truck driver should have been on the road. That truck had five out of service conditions, including holes in the brakes and the brake canisters and a defective steering wheel. The driver was on Tegretol and had epilepsy. Well, that's he, like a, a, an airline pilot in not inspecting his plane and saying, okay, we're going to take off. And there right. also was no mandatory pre-trip inspection. They it, absolutely have to do that, and they don't always do it. Well, it, it, but it's their life, too. I mean, so, it's a trucker's life. You know, just to focus on trucks for a minute, because what, what happened with Nunez was so disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, we actually did a FOIA request to the federal government, and we found out that there are over 1,000 companies in Michigan, which is thousands of trucks on Michigan roads, that have unsatisfactory safety ratings. What that means is, is that they have a substantial history of noncompliance 
with important mandatory safety requirements. 1,072 trucking companies in Michigan. Well, that's an enormous number, but somebody has to say something about it to someone to get some enforcement. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to ask you, each of you about some important case that you've handled, settled, or tried very recently. Sure. We'll sure. be right back. Legal referrals and more information on this and other related topics are available on our website at www.dueprocess.tv. There you'll find information on today's program, helpful hints to legal issues, support materials, and lawyer referrals. You can also stream previous episodes of Due Process. That's what she said. We're back on Due Process talking to Steve Hurston <coughs> and Tim Lessing about, uh, well, truck accidents and motor vehicle accidents, no fault insurance and things such as that. Two well-seasoned lawyers from two large firms. Uh, Tim, tell me about a case that you tried or settled recently uh, that was of interest uh, out of the out of the realm of normalcy, but something unusual. Well, uh, I just actually settled one, uh, thankfully. Thankfully, the insurance company came to its senses and understood its obligation to its insured. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, a young lady, she was in her 30s, very nice woman. She worked for a, uh, a company that had Christian apartment complexes, and she was the functional equivalent of a like a regional manager. She would go from place to place and make sure that these uh, dwellings were in good shape and things like that. And she was, uh, we talk about truck accidents, she was headed uh, up 75 again you know, on a rainy day from Toledo, uh, part of her work, and was in the left-hand lane. And a, a large box truck or other vehicle kind of swerved into her lane. And in order to correct, she was forced into the gravel shoulder. Unfortunately, because of the rain and because of the conditions, she went right through not only the gravel shoulder but into the grass median area, slammed on her brakes and slid and just kind of kept on going into oncoming traffic on 75. She was catastrophically injured. Uh, this beautiful, vibrant woman uh, was uh, is now the type of woman who, when you speak with her, you, you feel like you're dealing with one of your children. I mean, she has a serious cognitive issue. Um, she's got uh, physical issues that are uh, really without question. And yet, the insurance company, whose obligation it was to step up on the no-fault side and provide her with assistance, just refused to do it. We negotiated with them for several well, months. Well, when you say they refused, they, they made an offer. Well, no, they didn't. We, we submitted all of her bills. We submitted all of her treatment they records. They, they had no liability? They have doctors that the insurance company uses. They, they like to call them IMEs, independent medical examinations. You tell examinations. me this doctor looked at her and said she was OK? They had a physical medicine doctor take a look at her and determine not only that her physical condition was fine, but the cognitive state that she was uh, expressing was completely exaggerated oh, and really? she was malingering. Okay. Um, the irony is that one of our doctors is a well-known insurance industry defense doctor who is her <laughs> treater and he has said that there is something very seriously wrong with her. The insurance company chose to disregard it. Uh, Let me, I want to leave Steve some time here, but did you settle uh, after mediation or facilitation? We filed suit and we were actually, we had trial coming up on the 5th of this month and ultimately the insurance company understood its obligation and ultimately settled the case for what it was worth. But mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a problem that we have. It's now, you have to kick and scrape and, and well, fight just to get right. the insurance companies and to do what they agreed to and do. And they're fighting to keep their bottom line Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Right. Steve, tell us about one of your cases. Sure, and, and by the way, just picking up on what Tim said, you know, the reason this happens is because Michigan has no bad faith insurance laws. And it also has no punitive damages. Mm -hmm. uh, which means, for example, in, in, uh, with Cindy Nunez's brother, right. some of the worst truckers in the country come to Michigan because we don't have punitive damages, and these are the truckers that can't get jobs in other states because they're too dangerous. They've right. killed or, or have been in too many accidents. I, I want to stick on, on Cindy Nunez's brother's tragedy because I think at least some good has come out of it. Um, after we FOIA'd Michigan and we found out about those 1,072 companies, Last year, I was president of the National Truck Litigation Group for the AAJ, the, the National Association of Trial Lawyers. We did the same thing nationally. We found 28,000 companies in the United States, 28,000 28, that have substantial noncompliance with safety issues. At least, the, at least now, if I could point to the senseless tragedy of Patrick Nunez, I could say hopefully some good is now taking place because now that we have this information, at least we're making it public and at least this, this horrific safety crisis that no one really understands is now being made more public. Well, there's good to come out of tragedy. 
obviously. Well, let's hope so. But there's another situation that involves truckers from Mexico coming in and being able to drive more than the 50 mile limit that was imposed. Mm -hmm. And that presents other problems. So all you can say to people is, hey, you know what? You have to be defensive out there. You have to be defensive. You can't avoid some of the, the accidents, but you have to look and say, okay, I'll go a little slower. I'll back off that truck, let him go by with his 20 wheelers and let him just go right ahead. So I want to thank you, Tim. Thank you, Steve, for being thank here. Thank you, Henry. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, it's good information and it's something that people should pay attention to. So thanks very much. And, thank you. And good luck. I didn't uh, think that. Major funding for due process is provided by Mead Lexus of Southfield and Mead Lexus of Lakeside, offering a large selection of new and pre-owned certified premium vehicles. Someday, cars will use infrared to monitor the driver's face and alert them when they're not paying attention to the road ahead. The first ever HS Hybrid from Lexus. And by WWJ News Radio 950, keeping you up to date with the latest news, traffic, weather, sports, and business information 24 hours a day, seven days a week.